Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Stewart. I am the Staff Sergeant in charge of the Guns and Gangs section in our Organized Crime Branch. As many of you remember, on September 2nd, 2022, Southwest Patrol officers responded to two brazen shooting events in the White Ave area. At approximately 3 a.m., officers responded to a shooting of a woman in her 20s who was immediately rushed to hospital with life-threatening injuries. While police were on scene investigating the shooting, our officers witnessed another shooting in which no one was injured. The members arrested the shooter on scene and charged him with 12 firearm-related offences. The two shootings have since been determined to be unrelated. And today, we are here to announce an arrest in the first shooting where a young woman very nearly lost her life while she was just trying to enjoy a night out with a small group of friends. From what we have pieced together of that night, the accused joined the group later in the evening and they all shared a vehicle for a ride home. Inside the vehicle, the accused pulled out a handgun, unprovoked, shot the victim at close range and fled. Witnesses acted quickly, rushing the victim to the hospital. Doctors conducted emergency surgery and ultimately saved her life. If it weren't for the quick actions of the witnesses and the skill of our medical professionals, there may have been a very different outcome to this shooting. The EPS Firearms Investigation Unit conducted an extensive investigation, which ultimately led us to Ontario, where 33-year-old Qatar Mohammed Musa was arrested by Halton Regional Police Service on January 27th. He was charged with attempt to, mur attempt to murder while using a restricted firearm, possession of a loaded, restricted, or prohibited firearm, and possession of a firearm knowing it to be unauthorized. We don't believe the victim knew Mohammed Musa, and this horrific assault against her was completely spontaneous. It has changed her life, and she continues to face many obstacles as she recovers from what happened to her. This investigation was assisted by her courage, and I want to express how grateful we are to her. This follows a good example of way in which evidence gathering and witness information come together to build a case to support charges. We are supporting the victim with her recovery as much as possible, and we'll continue to do so as this investigation moves forward through the courts and beyond. We also want to thank Halton Regional Police Service, as well as Chilliwack RCMP for their assistance with this investigation. Thank you, I can take your questions now. So Chilliwack RCMP assists us with some witness interviews out in Chilliwack. Can you just give us some more background? So was uh, the accused with them for a period of time? Were they uh, at some establishments uh, on White Ave or was it just somebody they offered a, a ride home to? So what we know so far in the investigation is our victim was out with a group of friends. Uh, this suspect of ours joined the group sometime throughout the night. Um, our victim did not know uh, our suspect and uh, they were out throughout the night amongst uh, various uh, businesses and establishments in Edmonton and at some point uh, in that car ride home is when this event took place. Can you tell us where the, car, where the shooting happened on the ride? You bet. It, uh, we first reported it happened on White Ave but it happened just uh, in the vicinity south, we believe south of White Avenue in a vehicle. Which avenue? Uh, just 104 Street. Sorry, 109th Street, just south of White Ave. And, and the victim, where was she shot? Uh, she was shot in the chest. Um, um, from all accounts, that's what we have. She was shot in the chest one time, and again, rushed to hospital by her friends. What is her recovery like today? Uh, so far, she, she has her struggles, but she's doing really well. Um, again, we offer her support every day. We touch base with her frequently. And we're here to support her all the way through as she continues on. But she's doing, she's doing racks are pretty, pretty good right now. Um, are, are any statistics kept on the number of shootings in our city that involve innocent victims? You know, I, I was pulling up some stats here, and we have a low percentage. You know, this is an approximate 15 to 18% where we consider it, looking at it, uh, innocence involved. Uh, we don't always result in injuries when we have those shootings. Uh, we talk about that. It could be a road rage incident um, where a vehicle gets struck by a bullet. We don't know why sometimes. We don't ever catch a suspect. But, you know, you know, we say low, but it is a serious 
percentage, if you look at it, of anybody in a sense getting shot at, but it's around that 15 to 18% mark. Any other ones within the past year or so that your uh, Guns and Gangs unit is involved in? Uh, not that I have, but back in 20, I want to say 2020, 2021, we did a file project Galvanized, um, where an innocent lady was shot in her residence uh, while she was sleeping, and we laid charges on that, and that's just f going through the courts as we speak. There was a young lady shot just off Jasper Avenue last year in a vehicle. I'm trying to recall which one that is, and sorry, it's not jogging my memory, but... What about New Year's Day in Mill Woods, early morning hours? I don't have any information on that one either, yeah, sorry. Just the timeline of six months for, for the arrest, is is that as fast as the, the, as the investigation could go, or was it delayed because there were so many other shootings? No, um, this shooting, right from the very start, uh, I assigned to our firearms investigation unit. Um, any of these events, and I know I've, I've spoke about this many times, are very complex. Um, we have to take every piece of evidence, every piece of witness evidence, corroborate the evidence in order for us to get to the point of charge. And then we had the uh, unique circumstances in this where our suspect was not in Alberta, fled Edmonton after. So we were dealing with the logistics of trying to locate this individual out in Ontario. Um, so there were some challenges along the way. Um, but we were able to, you know, determine location. At that point, we, we called on regional, uh, Halton Regional Police Service to help us, and then we were able to apprehend him pretty quickly. Are you able to say how you tracked him to Ontario? Was it information from the, the group he was with or the victim? Or? I can't get into details about that, but it was through an investigative technique we were able to do it and locate him out there. And, and the firearm that was seized, um, was that the one that was used or believed to have been used in... So we did seize a, uh, Halton police did seize a, uh, a handgun out of the vehicle our suspect was driving on the day of his arrest. Uh, we haven't yet to been able to determine if that is our suspect weapon. Uh, we're doing uh, testing on that and it'll take some time to figure that out. But. Are you able to say the suspect was known to police before or had previous charges in Alberta or in Ontario or elsewhere? The suspect wasn't known to us at all here and very minimal interaction with police that we could see from our uh, investigation. How's, have you talked to the victim since he's been arrested? How's she dealing with the, the fact that there has been an arrest? Yeah, I know and uh, we, we keep in touch with the victim very regularly. Um, like I said, we, we're going to continue to do that through this investigation, through the court process and beyond, right? We have to offer support to not only her, but any victim in these events as we move forward. And, you know, she's, she's doing as good as to be expected, but, you know, we do keep in touch with her on a regular basis. Is there any indication why this happened? I, I don't want to say motive. Obviously, she's, uh, uh, this was probably shocking for everyone in the vehicle, but was, was he getting aggressive? Were things escalating in the vehicle? Prior to pulling. You know, it's in all accounts that we have, it was truly unprovoked. We don't, you know, know what, you know, had him make this decision to pull out this firearm and do this to her. Um, that's what makes it, you know, very unfortunate and also, you know, concerning that this would happen like this, right, in, to someone out just with a group of friends. So there's nothing that stands out that really triggered this event. and. And that's why, you know, we tried our best to make this as speedy as we could on this investigation. The public keeps hearing about, I mean, this is an unprovoked uh, attack, but we keep hearing about more firearms instances. What does the public need to be aware of right now? Well, I think I've said this, and I don't, I don't hide the fact we have a gun problem in our city. And um, we're trying our best to tackle that. We're trying our best to work on predictability of some of, this, uh, some of these events. Um, very challenging. I know I released last time that, you know, this isn't like we have uh, or crime groups or gangs out there committing a lot of these acts where we can, you know, we can, you know, put resources on it to try to combat some of this. So a lot of this is unpredictable. So we are doing our best. I know um, our service is trying to figure out the best course of action to put more resources on this. We do have our, you know, our gang suppression team very effective in going out and doing proactive work on some of these individuals or groups or people we believe involved in violence in our city. And then we have the ability of our firearms investigation unit to take on some of these events, but they're only, you know, their the capacity is only so much, right? I know you said he wasn't known to police. Is there any indication of gang involvement? Not that we have.
Police described the woman's condition as uh, she was seriously injured but stable. And in the subsequent release we saw today, we have her being described as in life-threatening condition and almost died. What explains the shift in language there? Yeah, you know what? At the very initial part of this investigation, there was a lot going on. Uh, we had a we had a shooting take place where our members were on the scene of that shooting. We thought the two were connected. Um, we're taking release that information out in real time uh, through the information that was being received through the hospital. And we only work with what we received out of the hospital. As we learned further through the investigation, we found that she was, um, if it wasn't for the, the quick action of her friends and the work of our medical staff, um, she would have been a different outcome here, would have been a tragic outcome. So we just work with the information that's provided at the time. And we try to release these out as quick as we can for information in the event that something comes up, but that's probably why the, the, the difference is there. Any further questions? Okay, thanks, Dan. That's it.